day one at Uncle Bob's. These Go Bob vans I was telling you about, they, uh, this one here, literally, <laughs> brand new, already, already smashed the front in. One of his employees had it and um, they ran into the back of another car. Oh man. It's not too bad, but <laughs> bloody irritating though. All right, we haven't had a lot of chance to get footage this morning because I just wanted to try and crack on a little bit and just get a wiggle on. Um, but this is as far as we've got. So we basically just followed suit with what was originally here. These are the guts of the boards. I've just taken the pack, the covers off. But all they've done is just taken the tray, just turned it upside down just so you can get the zip ties in behind. So we've literally just followed suit and we've just gone, Meow. there's the three-phase socket, which is going here, all the way across, another drop there for another socket there all the way across and then we'll just clip it onto the top of this brickwork here and then Mark's over there just putting that bit of tray along that side over there. But these here were the, um, some of you asked, some of you were asking about the sockets we're actually fitting, it's these ones here. I've just taken the, uh, I've just taken the guts of this one apart just to have a look inside. But that's all it is, just a three phase, five pin socket and then inside you've just got a triple pole uh, you've just got a three-phase RCD, so just a 40 amp, 30 milliamp RCD. So it's pretty straightforward. I didn't want to fit the RCDs in the board over there. I decided it was just better to put a triple pole breaker in there and put the RCD this side. I just thought it made a bit more, it's just a bit user-friendly to do it this way, to have the RCD here where the, where the outlet is. Um, and it was just quite a nice, neat little design. I just quite, I quite liked it. The whole thing is incorporated into one. I just thought it was neat to have the RCD in this all as one. So that's got to go over there. And then there's just over here is just a normal double socket on this side. Okay, um, this is later on in the day now cameraman has now turned up so the filming I was doing this morning was my own and now obviously it's uh, through someone else so somebody mentioned in a uh, in a previous video it, I can't remember where it was I'll try and dig the comment out but somebody mentioned that I don't do um, as many uh, walkthroughs of how I do stuff anymore so I will I've actually got to terminate these armors into this socket here uh, and it was one of the things that's been requested I just sort of never got around to it so uh, this is the uh, this is my way of doing it. Doing it with Tom. I kind of shot myself in the foot here because I'm working from, with two fixed points. Sometimes with armoured and stuff, when, you, when you're fitting it, if you, you can lose slack in a wall or in a, you know, in a void. Here you can't because it's on a tray, so you've got to you've got to cut it exactly to the height of the socket. I use one of these tools when I'm stripping the outer sheath. This is a CK, I actually can't remember the name of it, but that's, I mean, this one's seen quite a bit of action, but you just adjust that, you just turn the thumb wheel and you adjust it to how big or little the armor cable is. Um, and these are really good. You can use a hacksaw. In fact, Mark was saying about um, using a hacksaw, you can, I mean, you can just cut round the armored. You can do it that way. Uh, I mean, I've got a hacksaw on the van and you can do it, but this I just prefer is just, it's clean, fast, easy, it's quick you know, um, but you can use a hacksaw or this, whatever floats your boat. I'm gonna guess somewhere about there. The armor needs to basically sit on the top of those threads there, just at the top, so I think somewhere about there. Like I said, I mean, it gives you a lovely neat finish, but you can, you can do it with a hacksaw. I just prefer to use this method. And then the next step is to take your Stanley knife. I always use a fresh blade because trying to use a dull blade on this is uh, hard work and you just strip off the outer sheath. Always strip away from you. I did it once back in the day when it was the 16th edition and we had plastic fuse boards and I was fitting a plastic board. I was, uh, I was cutting out the notches on the back of the fuse board and uh, I was, as you shouldn't do, I was doing this, cutting it towards me or however it was I was holding it and I was cutting towards me. It slipped and uh, that was about 10 years ago I did that and uh, you can still see the scar there now. I just went like that and it just, uh, that bled a lot. So ever since then, <laughs> always cut away from me. It's one, it's important to 
make sure you've scoured. If you don't scour that well enough, you'll end up getting to this stage and these won't snap nice and cleanly and you'll end up, you just get a, you just get a rough finish here. It just doesn't look. It... A few inches later. Uh, I can't remember what I got up to, but anyway, yeah. You'll find that if you don't scour this deeply enough, these won't cut cleanly and you get a, you just get a nasty finish. And get your Stanley knife, I'd say about an inch, somewhere around there, and just scour around it, like so. And then I go an inch, inch above, two inches below, somewhere around there, I would say. This bit, you've got to be careful. You've basically just got to very gently scour this outer sheath thing, but without cutting into the inner cores. So I find just scour it slightly and then pull it back just to break, just to break it. And it pulls off like that. You normally find with cheap armored cable, this has got a little bit of, this hasn't actually got loads, but it's got some, it's got that talc inside. When you get cheap armored, this is an absolute pig to pull off. And if you've got, if you're trying to do like big panels and stuff, and you've got to pull off like two meters of it, trying to do that step is an absolute mare. Right, at this point, you get your shroud. I was always told when you slide that up the armored, it should stay in that position. If it slides back down, you've cut it too long, so it should be able to hold where you've, where you cut it. The amount of times I've done armor and you forget to put the shroud on, <laughs> you've terminated it and you're left with the shroud in your hand. I've done that many a time. So that goes on, just up into there. Then you splay it out like that. I actually prefer working with bigger glands because they're just easier. You know, 25s and 32s and stuff, they're just nicer to work with. These little 20S ones are so small there. And then take your nut fuckers. I would use the spanner, but my set of spanners is in the, uh, is in the container and I'm not going all the way back there. So I just use a pair of nut fuckers. So you just tighten it up, somewhere about there I'd say. And that's it. That then goes on, something like that. And that then just clips to your tray, job done. Going on about this thing about putting different brands of breakers in fuse boards and stuff. And somebody mentioned, what do you do if you get to an old fuse board? It is a good question, because like, I mean, this, this here is Proteus. Now Proteus is, I mean, you don't really can't, you don't get Proteus anymore, but there's a company, I think it's M2, City Electrical Factors, it's, it's through cities. Um, and they stock a brand called M2, which apparently is, is basically Proteus. It's a rebrand a re of Proteus or something. So in this board, it's not an issue. So although you can't get Proteus, you can get M2. Um, but I have, you know, especially like the old, uh, um, MEM boards and stuff where you can't get the breakers anymore. It is a good question. What do you do? Um, we did a board in uh, November and we couldn't get the we couldn't get MEM breakers. So we ended up just having to put a brand new three phase board in. There's not a lot, you know, not a lot you can do. This thing of, um, while we're on the subject of these breakers and stuff, this thing of uh, you, you shouldn't be working inside live panels and stuff is still rumbling on in a small, you know, small select community of Spark. Still, uh, or maybe they're not, I don't know. It's just in the comments, but you know, you shouldn't be working on like open panels like this. <laughs> You're a fucking Spark. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I, I just don't get, you're always gonna have, you know, you're always going to have electricity around. It's just, you, it's, your, it's your job. That's like telling a plumber not to get wet, you know? <laughs> I don't understand what, you know, what are you supposed to do? It's such an empty argument. I just don't, you know, I don't know. Right, that is the three phase, that's the three phase isolators, which you saw earlier. So that's the cable for those. I haven't got a three phase uh, doofer yet, a three phase uh, wadjaba doobry, uh, one of those doobry fur coids. I haven't got one. So I've got to pick one of those up tomorrow. So that can sit in here for a second with the way it goes on. Uh, that one is just for the sockets, which is what I've got to terminate next. So that's just for the standard 13 amp sockets, um, which I think I'm just going to terminate into this panel here um, on a 20 amp breaker, I think. So that's those, which I'll do now. A few inches later. Hand cramps. Do other sparks get this or is it just when you're doing intricate work and you're trying to morph your hands like Mr. Tickle and you end up getting high, you get cramp. I remember when I was, uh, when I was in uh, Colston's about when I was an apprentice and we had, it was everything we did was commercial. There was no domestic stuff like I'm doing now. It was all, it was all commercial and industrial stuff. And this does remind me of it. And uh, I remember when I, I, doing it all back then and when you do it now 
you, uh, it's amazing how it does come back to you. You do, you just remember it. It's, uh, it never sort of leaves you. It's always there, you know, it's always in your noggin. You just don't forget it. And uh, I was saying to somebody else the other day, and I met them in the street, I saw a subscriber in the street and was uh, just talking about how anal you become. And uh, just like little things like when you put these, uh, when you put these glands in and you put the banjo, you drill the hole, put the bolt in, it's just that sequence of, and it's, it becomes really satisfying to actually do a really neat job. It just, I don't know. That's what I think anyway. Many a time I've done that, where you're doing this with a knife. And, uh, and it is just one of those things. It's just, I think it's an experience thing and you just sort of learn to do it. But doing that with your knife, I mean, some people frown against it but I've done it before. If you look at electricians, they always have cuts on the inside of their fingers because you're just stripping nut cables, all sorts of stuff. And when you do that with armored and you're twisting it like that, I've done it before where you know, you've slipped and you've just cut your, you know, you've cut your finger on the knife. It just, you can actually use that tool. If you look at the instructions on that, you can use that and you can just, you just scour it just until you can hear it touch the metal and that's it, you've cut through it. Or just use a hacksaw, design, what do I know? <laughs> Doesn't matter how, how often you do it, you still make mistakes. Spot the schoolboy error that I've just made. Won't, won't take you long. <laughs> Fuck, really. Uh, so this was actually the, uh, just moving on, because we've almost finished the power. So we've done the RCD three-phase stuff and the power, and this is just, uh, this is the next job we've got to do. So this was, uh, some of you were saying about, you know, um, why you fit wired system, this was just the kit that they provided. So um, I don't think he was uh, trying to do it to save money. I think it was actually just, I think he was in Costco or wherever it was. And uh, job, I don't think it was a money saving exercise. It was just, he saw this and he picked it up. So um, yeah, we can fit it. Um, but it did go on. Some people did talk about, um, this is actually the next thing I was gonna discuss, but like two minutes, let me just unbox it. Cause I've not actually seen inside this kit yet. What sort of cameras have we got? Uh, they are a bit on the plasticky side. Uh, okay, these are the uh, internal ones. Oh no, what am I saying? These are, which is which? These are the internal ones. All right, that's the DVR. What have we got? Just a normal DVR, yeah. Okay. Anyway, what some of you were saying in the comments about these wired systems, when I said it was more of a budget system, some of you had picked up on the fact that it was this coax and power. And you can buy this stuff on drums, uh, this stuff here. You can buy this, but it's quite expensive. I think a 100 meter drum of this, I think from memory, I Googled it the other day and it's like 70 quid a drum for 100 meters. It's pretty pricey. Um, and you've just got your BNC connector and your power port connector. You can buy um, its RJ59 shotgun you can call it i call it rj59 power is what i call it and it's basically it's just um a coax with power you've got a coax cable and you've got power on it's like a shotgun cable but one's coax one's power and you can buy that or what i'm going to do here is um if i can open this up to show you you just use these little video balance these things here so you just plug one of these onto the end of the camera and in that way rather than running an rg59 cable you can run a cat 6 cable instead or cat 5e whichever you prefer um, but also by doing that, it also future proofs the install. I think it does anyway. I think it future proofs it because that way, if you run a Cat6 in, it's, you know, then you can use internet cameras. You can, there's just a bit more flexibility, and especially if you run Cat6 rather than Cat5e. So that's the way I'm going to be doing it. I'm going to use these little video balance and these little connectors here to, to go from power to Cat5. So. You can buy the balance, which have got this included on it, but this is all I've got on the van, but I might actually get some uh, from the wholesaler in the morning because you can get these little balance with the power attached to them as well. So that's quite a good way if you want to upgrade a system from this traditional setup here, that's a good way of doing it. Run Cat6 and then use these. Because they're valeters, they're very kindly valeting my van for me. I think it's a cool van. This stuff is cool as fuck. It's like, um, it's called dry steam. And it is hot, but you can put your hands on it. It won't burn you, but it's, I can't really describe it. It's a dry steam, but that's how they wash cars now. They don't, you know, you think like, 
remember the days when you had um, you had valises and they used to open the back doors of their van there was like a 200 litre water butt there and they washed it not anymore you just use these diesel powered machines here and it's just dry steam that's all it is <laughs> how far stuff has come and you don't unless you know about it you just don't you know you don't hear about it you don't know I'm just fitting this outside light just before we go tonight i want to get this outside light fitted they're going full bore anal on that van i mean i know like valentine companies i know like they're a, i know they're a proper valentine company <laughs> i'd never do that This is the last job of the day. It is, I don't know, it's about half six, somewhere around there. You feel you lose track of time when you work in, because it's nice and warm and dry and cozy. You just, you completely lose track of time. But this is the last job I've just got to put, it's a 50 watt floodlight. I've just fitted that up there. And uh, I've just got to put a, uh, fuck, it's getting late. Whisker box, that's the word I'm looking for. I've just got to put this whisker box up there, hook up this flex and that's it. Some people are still, you know, they're asking about working for yourself and, you know, should I do it? and is it worth it and and all that sort of stuff and in all honesty it's the only i think the only advice i could give honestly is if you're going to do it you have to jump and just do it because the amount of people who ask it in the comments you know can i hold down a full-time job and you know try it on the side and i don't i just like to point out i am clipping this i'm just not doing it tonight it's too fucking cold I think if you do it, you just have to, you have to just jump, you know, you can't be in a, a full-time job and then do this as a, as an on the side thing. You just have to, you just have to jump. I can't explain it any other way, but it's worth it. I wouldn't, it's hard sometimes and I, I it is, it's a pain, but I'm a firm believer that the world is what you make it. And I can hand on heart say I have met since I've been here and moved to London, since I've done this, I have met some amazing people, you know, everybody from, you know, George, the guy in there, to the man standing behind that camera, to Mark in there today. You just meet incredible people. And uh, we got a few minutes of light left. I'm just a motivated little sod, but anything you want in this world, it's yours. That's a fact. You can have any, you can set your mind on anything. You just have to, you just have to have the, the bravery to go and do it. And I say, you just got to jump. If you want to do it, you just have to just let go and just jump and just do it and you just pour your heart and soul into it and you just you just hope it works and it will work if you believe it will that's that's 80 percent you're 80 percent of the way there but that's that's it and it you know and then people say oh why do you you know why are you, you know you're working so late you're not working right and it isn't that it's that you know when you've got something that's yours i could give a fuck if i'm out here at 7 30 at night fitting a light in the cold i couldn't care because you've got a dream in your head that you follow and and that's it you just n none of this shit matters it's you know risking everything for a dream that no one sees except you that's what it is anyway it is cold i'm gonna put a way go on that and we're done all right we are about there <laughs> i've had enough tonight i'll give you a quick tour show what we've done so the trays all gone in we've put the isolator in now for the three phase uh, cleaning machines they wanted socket there i was going to fit usb sockets and on the basis they're incredibly unreliable i decided to stick with the old-fashioned yeah, good old fashioned one. Talking of which, I saw in, uh, I think it was in TLC this morning when I got this tray. TLC did a small little USB-C sockets now. First time I've seen them, I have 15 quid each in there. Um, so again, that was the other reason I maybe I decided mm, not worth fitting them here. So trays carried on all the way around. And to those two over there. Same thing again over there. We put them up higher just to, uh, just in case cars back into them or anything, because th this whole area here is gonna be for balloting and stuff, so. But that's it, we're back here tomorrow to fit the CCTV, so that'll be another video. That'll probably be for next week now. Um, and yeah, on that note, we shall see you next week. Take care.